it appears that Arkansas State has pr two pretty good uh, quarterbacks and an experienced offensive line. What do you see as being the key challenges in this matchup? Yeah, well, it's definitely always tough, you know, facing a, a veteran offense line who has so many years underneath their belt for experience, you know, uh, you not, not, not only having one, but, you know, two, you know, pretty good weapons at quarterback is definitely a challenge for us as well. Um, but, you know, I think our D line is going to be super solid, you know, even though we lost three starters last year, um, you know, that was kind of a, you know, a question, you know, that ran through my mind, like, who are we going to replace? Who's going to step up? And, uh, you know, I think all three guys have definitely stepped up and I think we'll be just as solid as last year. Um, and, you know, quarterback wise, you know, like I said, they're definitely very experienced, but, you know, nothing like we face in the Big 12. So that's no challenge for us. And, uh, and Justin Hughes is interesting. Uh, Coach Stannard said a couple weeks ago that he was still dusting off the rust in his game. How have you maybe seen Jay Ball kind of progress throughout this, uh, the course of, of practice to get to this point where he's able to play again? Yeah. Well, you know, prayers for him, you know, it's crazy how much he's been through, how much, you know, adversities he's fought, you know, with these injuries and all that kind of stuff. So definitely excited and glad to have him back at Mike Backer. Um, you know, just missed that vocalization that he has, um, you know, how well he communicates, how loud he gets it through. Um, you know, it's nice having him, you know, as the quarterback of the defense, calling out the calls and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, you know, talking about getting the dust off his, um, you know, off his game, obviously missed out on a lot of football. Um, but, you know, just like any other player, you know, you got to go out there and get the reps in and, uh, you know, just get get that experience back and get those reps back. And, uh, you know, things will start to fall back into place. Thanks so much, White. Good luck. Kills. White, what is your excitement level knowing that you're going to be playing football here in four days or whatever it is? Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, you know, it was just a few weeks ago, you know, we didn't we thought the season was going to get canceled. So. Um, you know, how tables have turned so much and, uh, you know, just super blessed and fortunate that the Big 12 allowed us to play football this year and how the commissioners and the presidents, you know, um, and, you know, the athletic directors, you know, just, um, you know, gave us that chance and allow us to play. So super blessed and fortunate, not just for me, but, you know, the rest of my teammates were super excited and, uh, you know, we just can't wait, just ready to roll. And uh, how has Bronson Massey matured as a defensive end over the past couple months in your mind? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, last year Bronson fought through injury. So, uh, you know, he definitely was going through those hard times through that adversity. Uh, but, you know, he got that all squared up and squared up away. And uh, he's definitely came back ready. It's his last year and he knows that for sure. So, um, you know, he's trying to go out with a bang and, you know, try to impress the team. And, um, you know, he started in a lot of games and, uh, you know, he's played in a lot of games too. So he, he has a lot of experience underneath his belt. And uh, with this being his last year, you know, he's just ready to go out there and do his thing. Adam. Wyatt, as you mentioned earlier, you're all online for school. And now that it's game week, just what's the day-to-day -day grind for you as a football player now? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, like I said, my classes are limited, not in very many classes right now. Um, I'll actually be graduating in the fall. Uh, but, you know, with all, all that free time that I have, you know, I just I sat down before the, before the season started and I kind of just went through my schedule. And, uh, you know, I just realized how much extra free time I have. And I asked myself, you know, what can I do with all that extra free time that excels me past guys, you know, not only on my team, but on other teams as well. Um, what can I do rather than just show up and go to practice to make myself better? And, uh, you know, obviously I've de dedicated and, you know, turned that time into, into being productive time, you know, with extra weightlifting sessions, with extra film sessions with extra treatment sessions, you know, times so I can take care of my body more. Uh, just having all the free time and all that time just to do whatever I want with it. Um, I just decided to take that time just because it is so valuable and, uh, you know, do something football related through that time just so, I, just so I can excel myself, you know, not only past my teammates, but other people as well. Disney World fits. Wyatt, uh, thanks for taking time today. What uh, what is the difference that you can see right now between uh, how Scotty Hazelton would handle a defense and Joe Klanderman? Yeah, well, it's kind of tough to answer that question because you know we haven't even played our first game yet. So um, you know, I really don't know how how Klanderman is going to operate in a game time situation, uh, whether we're up a lot, down a lot. 
uh, whether the offense is driving down the field when a quick two minute series. Uh, but, you know, I, I think I can, you know, pretty much say that I think they're going to handle it pretty much the same way. Uh, I say that because they're both two of the smartest coaches I've ever had in football. And uh, it's crazy that, you know, I've had two coaches like that, you know, on the same staff, on the same exact team. Um, so, you know, once Coach Hazleton left, we all knew Coach uh, Klanerman was going to step up and be the D coordinator because um, that's something that he's always been prepared for and something he's always been ready for. And, uh, you know, when bulls are flying and, you know, crazy times are happening on the field, you know, um, you know, even just at practice with Coach Klanerman, he makes quick adjustments in the secondary, you know, in the box and the ups with the front seven. Um, just quick changes like that that adjust our game plan. Last one, Kels. Yeah, one more for you, Wyatt. Uh, when you reflect back on the year you spent with Coach Kleiman, what would you say you appreciate most about him? You know, the thing I appreciate the most about Coach Kleiman is, you know, every decision he makes, he does it for, you know, us players. And, uh, you know, you can't, you can't name a better coach than him. And, uh, uh, you know, just having a head coach that makes all of his decisions based off his players' interests is something that, you know, gets us so fired up and, you know, just makes us realize, like, Coach Kleiman gives it all for us, so we got to give it all for him. And uh, that's pretty much the sum of that answer because, you know, it's so true and it happens on a daily basis for us.